this meeting of the Northern Ireland Assembly Public Accounts Committee. Um, and we're now in public session. Members, we have a quorum and broadcasting. Can I ask you to bring in Mr. Kyle Bingham, the Northern Ireland Audit Office uh, Assembly Support Officer? Mr. Bingham, can you hear us okay? Uh, yes. Good afternoon, Chair and members. I can hear you. I'll okay. see you. Afternoon. Thank you. And uh, at this stage, I'd also welcome uh, Mr. Kieran Donnelly, the Comptroller and Auditor General from the Audit Office, and Mr. Tomas Wilkinson. Um, members, before we go into um, the uh, agenda item five, I'd like to make a brief statement um, in terms of the sport um, sustainability, sport and I sustainability fund. Um, yesterday, I had received a number of phone calls and correspondence, and I spoke uh, to the controller uh, in, in relation to those issues, um, and uh, I essentially. Uh, the position is, and I am making this now public, on behalf of the committee, with the agreement of all members of the committee who are present today. Um, I have spoken with the audit office who have confirmed they will be scrutinising the COVID-related expenditure in the uh, audits of government departments and in their public reporting programme. The audit office has also confirmed that this type of grant expenditure will be examined. So, essentially, that is the position. Um, we obviously have taken uh, uh, a decision some time ago in terms of the audit uh, office recommendations and the, and the work that we have decided to take forward in terms of reports uh, that will become inquiries. That work has started, uh, so therefore there is no time um, schedule on this work. Uh, I uh, am aware that the, the uh, Committee for Communities is taking its own course. Of work, but as far as we are concerned, we will await the Northern Ireland Audit Office coming back through the Comptroller and Auditor General in relation to these issues, and then members will make decisions as to when we begin work on those um, hearings around those particular uh, inquiries. Content, members? Content. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Agenda item five then is correspondence, um, pages seventeen to thirty of your pack. Sorry, sorry, I'm, I'm jumping way forward. Yeah. Apologies. Yeah. No, it's not. No numbers on this, unfortunately. Um, okay. So, apologies. Can I have received apologies from Mr. Hilditch this afternoon, who's unable to join us? Okay. The draft minutes of the meeting of the uh, last meeting of the committee, which was on the 18th of March. Um, members, you will have read them. Um, and are you happy enough that they are an accurate reflection of the meeting? And do I have your permission to sign them? Yes. Thank you. Declarations of interest. Is any member any declarations of interest they wish to declare this afternoon? None. Okay. Any matters arising from the minutes? None. Thank you. Okay. And now we can deal with correspondence at agenda item five. Um, pages seventeen to thirty of your pack, and I refer to correspondence dated the fifteenth of March. 2021 from Robin Swan, the Health Minister. In your packs, pages 17 and 18, regarding COVID-19 indemnity arrangements for spring-summer 2021. Further to the Minister's letter of the 14th of October 2020, this is an update on the indemnity cover his department has put in place in accordance with Section 13 of the Coronavirus Act 2020 and its health care responsibilities. Any members, any comments they wish to make? If not, are members content? Okay. Members, I refer to correspondence dated the 18th of March 2021 in your PAC, uh, page 19, from Kevin Lochran, asking if there are any outdated turbines that are broken 70% of the time getting money from the public purse that are not creating electricity for the grid. 
Uh, my understanding, having taken advice from the Audit Office, is that accredited wind generating stations only earn rocks based on the amount of electricity they generate, and therefore, if they are not working, they will not receive any rocks. Um, Mr. Donnelly, do you want to confirm that position? I can any confirm comment? that, Chair. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Members, are you content that we write back to Mr. Lochran to ask if he has any evidence of this? He would be uh, best placed to pass that on to the committee as part of the inquiry. Agreed? Agreed. 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 Okay. <coughs> this stage, uh, welcome, Mr. O'Toole. Apologies. Late, to Mr. O'Toole. Um, um, members, I refer to correspondence dated the 19th of March 2021, your pack at pages 20 to 30, from Mr. Deidre Toner. Northern Ireland Civil Service Commissioner regarding the evidence session on the 4th of March 2021 as part of the committee's current inquiry into capacity and capability in the Northern Ireland Civil Service. Uh, as requested by the committee, Ms Toner has provided details on the recommendation that the commissioners have made to the Northern Ireland Civil Service departments since she has taken up post and the current number of temporary posts within the Northern Ireland Civil Service at Grade 5 and above. Members, do you have any comments you wish to make? No. Mr Donnelly, have you any comment you wish to make? Uh, other than we'll take account of this uh, when working up your report in due course. Mm -hmm. Okay. Members content to note? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, members, we will continue and remain in open session. Agenda item six then is the Ministerial Direction COVID Disruption Payment Scheme for Students at pages 32 to 51 of your pack. Uh, members, I refer to correspondence from Mr. Kieran Donnelly, CB Controller and Auditor General, dated the 18th of March 2021, at your pack, pages 32 to 33, regarding a ministerial direction of £500 COVID disruption payment scheme for students. The Department um, a DFE Permanent Secretary wrote to Mr. Donnelly on the 11th of March 2021 to advise he had sought ministerial direction from the Department of the Economy Minister Diane Dodds, MLA, on the 4th of February 2021 to implement a support scheme for students. Members, the background of the proposal can be found in correspondence from Mr Mike Brennan, the Permanent Secretary at the Department, and Ms Diane Dodds, um, dated the 4th of February 2021 at pages 34 to 44 in your pack, which outlines the details of the scheme. This is a one-off discretionary payment of £500. Uh, to full-time students at Northern Ireland publicly funded higher education institutions and full-time higher education students at further education colleges in recognition of the disruption covered by students to their uh, studies due to the impact of COVID-19. The proposed payment will be made by the ETIs and the FECs to all full-time students, undergraduate and postgraduate, enrolled at their institutions. Um, including the administration cost, the proposed scheme for the full-time uh, home EU and GB students uh, in Northern Ireland's ETIs and FECs is likely to be approximately £22 million. Um, members, Mr. Mr Donnelly comments that while the Permanent Secretary has indicated that there is political support for this project, the Executive has agreed to provide funding to the scheme and is expensive and carries high risks. Mr Donnelly has provided with his letter the relevant correspondence which underpinned the decision to proceed with the delivery of the scheme. The paper the Minister sent to the, of the scheme to the Executive on the 4th of February 2021 at Annex A, pages 45 to 48 of your pack. The recommendations were subsequently agreed by the Executive at the Executive meeting on the 4th of February, Annex B, page 49 of your pack. At the Minister's direction on the accounting officer to proceed with the the scheme on the 9th of February 2021, Annex C, pages 50 to 51 of your pack. Um, can I just ask, before I go to members, does the Comptroller and Auditor General any comment they want to make? Uh, yeah, I suppose it's one of the higher value schemes, uh, 20 million. Um, there's a 10% admin support there as well for the higher and further education institution to administer. This uh, payments uh, are supposed to be made before the end of March, so it's been done at a fast pace. Um, there's quite a long list of risks presented by the, the accounting officer. There's a, a whole litany of them. Um, just going through the, the risk of um, a 
I suppose, parity with, with GB, uh, the inability to do uh, a proper economic appraisal and a quality impact assessment, risks of overspend, underspend, risks of legal challenge, um, the generosity of the scheme. So there's a whole list of things there. Some of, some of the arguments are probably stronger than others, and I suppose I would say some of those risks can be mitigated. Uh, so, for example, the fraud and error thing, I think that should be capable of being mitigated with proper controls. Uh, so, so, you know, the scheme in one sense is, is simple. Uh, you know, it's a £500 per, per student. It's just a lot of students, uh, nearly 40,000. Um, the scheme, uh, as currently presented, is just for, for students uh, at Northern Ireland, further and higher education establishments. So what isn't covered at the moment is students uh, that are studying, say, in GB or, or, or elsewhere. Uh, and there is uh, reference uh, in that the department was looking at the possibility yep. of uh, maybe addressing that point. So uh, just given the scale of it, we will obviously monitor this in our normal audit work going, going yeah. forward. Okay. Um, do any members wish to make any comment on it, Mr. Muir? Um, thank you much. Yeah, but, um, no, to agree with the stuff that Kieran has raised um, compared to the other previous um, ministerial directions that we've received. Just one issue: it, it noted that legislation had to be enacted for the payments to take place, and I also understand that the logic behind this was that the payments would be made in the current financial year in order to try to reduce the amount of money which would have to be surrendered to Your Majesty's Treasury, as well as we can clarify with the Department what progress they've got in terms of being able to complete the rollout of the scheme in this coming year. Uh, I don't know the, the answer to that question yet, but that's something we'll definitely look at, the, uh, how that legislative cover has worked out a, and the, the rollout of the scheme uh, and um, how much has been spent before the end of the, the financial year. Uh, yeah. yeah. So just one other thing as well. Uh, obviously, we've got other ministerial directions to consider here today, but there's been quite a lot, really. And it's just whether, as part of that review, which was outlined at the beginning by the chair, whether the, the, the scale and numbers of these ministerial directions will form part of the audit office's review. Um. I was actually thinking of doing a separate piece just purely on ministerial directions themselves. Yeah. So that's something that, okay. uh, because, Chair, uh, I think we have had more uh, mm. since the start of COVID uh, in that one year that, that since the start of devolution, yeah. you know, 20 years ago. So that we're, we have three this week. Uh, we have almost one every So there, there's quite a lot of them. So it would be good to actually take stock on how that whole uh, process is, is working. Yeah, I think in terms of openness and transparency, it, it would be a good idea to do it. And obviously, they will they will come through this committee, but I think it would be a good idea to put them in the public domain so that people are uh -huh. aware. I think that's the point Mr. Muir is making, that you know, yeah. you know, in terms of Mr. Stevenson as well, we, we've had that discussion before yes. as well, in terms of mm -hmm. the information going out from the department. Can I ask, Chair, just on that point, um, I'm aware that I think the Cabinet Office published on gov.uk, yeah. there's a place you can go to to see all ministerial directions approved by the UK mm -hmm. government. Is there an equivalent here? Well, um, uh, you had raised that point earlier, uh, a committee, and on foot of that, um, I think we wrote to, to the finance department. Mm -hmm. They have agreed to implement it, yeah, so it's yeah. just, um, so it's going to be put up somewhere. <coughs> yeah. Uh, and I think it's important they're put up on a timely basis as yeah. well. Uh, there was a school of thought of let's wait until the, you know each department does its annual accounts, but the, the, they need to be put up on, in real time. Might, might uh, be an idea if, if members are agree, agreed that perhaps I write to Sue Gray or Stuart Stevenson or both, basically asking the question when. I think you'd already written, Chair, on it. We need yeah. to check. Yeah. Um, uh, if, if we have, and it's just maybe a little yeah, follow we, up. Uh, uh, yeah. We haven't got. Progress. I, we, I was speaking to the Deputy Clerk, we haven't got confirmation on that yet. So I think a, a, a follow up letter might be a bad idea mm. in relation to that so that we can get it in the public domain. And I think that is, that is important. Members agreed? Agreed. Okay. Okay. Do any members have any comments other than Mr. O'Toole around, uh, Mr. Weir or Mr. Muir? Sorry. Um, 
Everybody happy? Thank you. Okay, agenda item seven then, ministerial direction, um, Department of Health, uh, additional finance support to uh, Department of Health core grant funded organisations 2021, table to pages three to six of your pack. Members are referred to the correspondence, Mr. Kieran Donnelly, Controller and Auditor General, um, dated the 23rd of March 2021 at pages three to four of your pack regarding correspondence from the Permanent Secretary on a ministerial direction to provide additional financial support for Department of Health core grant funded organisations. The sector provides support to some of the most vulnerable children and adults um, as vulnerability was exacerbated by the pandemic. The role of the sector was felt to be even more critical than in normal circumstances. In recognition of the challenges faced by the sector during the pandemic and their contribution to the COVID response, the Health Minister has now directed that core grant allocation for 2020 stroke 2021 be uplifted by 25 per cent. Grants to these organisations currently total £3.5 million per annum, and the ministerial direction provides for an uplift of 25 per cent of this grant, which will provide an extra £872,000. Members also tabled in your packet, pages 5 to 6, are the relevant supporting papers, correspondence to the CNAG dated the 10th of March from Mr Richard Pengelly, the Accounting Officer, Department of Health, and Annex A, correspondence from the Department of Health, Robin Swan, dated the 1st of February 2021, implementing the ministerial direction. Mr Donnelly, have you any comments before I bring in members? Uh, yeah, the, the amount of money tied up in this one is much smaller than the last, uh, so it's actually about it's less than a million pound, eight hundred and seventy-five thousand. This relates not to the services provided by voluntary and community groups. It's actually um, work they would do on advocacy and uh, you know policy work, um, and. Um, the budget for this type of thing was actually reduced back <clears throat> in 1617 by 25 per cent, uh, and the idea was that there would be a separate innovation fund to do this sort of thing. That never materialised. New minister come in, and uh, that was not introduced. So, so what has happened? That is essentially being uh, re reinstated. Uh, I think the idea was that. Um, you know, voluntary groups were doing this sort of thing. You know, it would go out to the market, and uh, groups would tender to do this sort of thing. As, uh, so it was a different way of, of handling it. But it, uh, the sums of money are not major in terms of the mm. overall health budget. Okay. Any members want to come in on that particular issue? Content. Thank you. Okay. Agenda item eight then is. Um, Ministerial Direction from the Executive Office Travel Agent Support Scheme, Table Pack, pages 8 to 17. Members, I refer to correspondence from Mr. Kieran Donnelly, CB, the Comptroller and Auditor General, dated the 23rd of March 2021, at pages 8 to 9 of your Table Pack, regarding correspondence from the Executive Office on a Ministerial Direction COVID Support Scheme for Travel Agents. The proposal is for a flat payment of £10,000 to approximately 100 travel agent businesses, plus £3.5,000, approximately 50 home workers. The bespoke scheme will cost in the region of £1.175 million. Uh, the ministers wrote to the interim accounting officer of the TU, TU sorry, on the 11th of March, requesting that he implements the travel agent support scheme. On the 12th of March, the interim accounting officer sent a copy of the ministerial direction to the Department of Finance for approval in accordance with the MPMNI. The relevant support papers are in your pack at pages 10 to 17. Again, Mr Donnelly, have you any comments you wish to make on this? Uh, well, well, this is a, a, a more straightforward sort of flat payment, uh, £10,000 to 100 uh, travel agents. Um, we should take it, but a million pound for that part of it, and a few other other aspects. Uh, I suppose the main case for the direction again was lack of time uh, and data to support a, a business case. It's a sector government wouldn't have probably had much prior engagement with, uh, and uh, the correspondence is that there's a bit of further work required to just finalise the the scheme. Yeah. Um, I suppose one of the interesting things in this one, it has come through the executive office, um, 
with some of these initiatives, sometimes it's not clear what department's going to to run them, and th this one has landed in the in the executive office. Okay. Mm. Okay, members, you've heard the position is set out by um, the Comptroller and Auditor General, Mr. Muir. Thank you, Chair. Um, I think the support that's being provided under this is very welcome. It's contacted by a number of public staff for first support, and we're glad to see it being provided. But I think the question has to be asked: if has been raised by Kieran, or more, more noted by Kieran, and the question is really for himself: is why it was left to EU to bring this forward when other departments, such as economy, um, have been able to bring forward a level of support? So it was obviously something to query in due course why it was left to TEO to take this forward. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, any other members? I just ask. Uh, Sorry. If available. Hello. Yeah. Um, I think this is an area where there's unlikely to be profiting anyway because obviously there's a uh, restriction to travels going forward is uh, certainly for a, a period uh, into towards the summer, if not further, um, they. I understand just from reading up the paperwork that the executive office uh, had simply been lobbied and, and met and discussed it uh, with with representatives of associations. Perhaps that's that's why they they are ultimately bringing a plan forward. Um, I, I I think it would be better if it had been put together earlier rather than literally the last the final. The final week, the final opportunity. Uh, nevertheless, uh, uh, I think we have to welcome some support to this sector who will be struggling very much so. Mr. Till, did you want to say something? Yeah, it's just a very brief uh, question. Which is, is this the first ministerial direction from the executive office during COVID? I think it was because essentially the executive office will be mainly involved in policy rather than direct delivery. So uh, I'm not aware of any others. Uh, and, this point. And it's, uh, I'll, I'll double check that, but from and it obviously is strange because it involves the strange factor of someone who's not the permanent secretary being the accounting officer in writing. Uh, right. Um, well, that, that's another interest. But um, the accounting officer, by convent, by well, it's more custom and practice mm -hmm. in the executive office, is not the head of the service, yeah. uh, but it's an under. So it's. The accounting officer role in that department has traditionally been uh, carried by an under secretary. So that that is the uh, just, just uh, and that has been the case for many years. Um, okay, and the, are they at the under secretary? So they, that's the grade immediately below permanent. Uh, <coughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, Any other member content to note? Okay, members, um, we will now go into close the session to discuss the issues regarding uh, the inquiry into generating electricity from renewable energy. Members, we are now in closed session. Assembly, Senate Chamber, programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly, Senate Chamber, programme signed. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly, Senate Chamber, Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly, Senate Chamber, Programme Sound. This is the Northern Ireland Assembly.